I'm Kerry from Living in Loveliness and today I'm going to show you how to make a really easy bowl cosy. So these are great, you can see here I've got one just at the side that's just got my cottons in, but these are the perfect accessory to pop under your bowls um, when you've got your soup in there or even when you've got your cold breakfast, especially on these cold mornings. I personally want to see these with bowls in filled with sweets at your special occasions, whether it's an Easter party, a Christmas party, um, and I just think these are a great table accessory. Of course, you can embellish these if you want to. Um, I've had ladies in the past put bells on these, pom-poms, so you can really go to town or you can use your fabulous fabrics to make them look as pretty as you can. So it's a really easy project, and to make this project, all you need is a 10 inch piece of batting and then you need two 10 and a half inch pieces of pretty fabrics contrasting or coordinating it's entirely up to yourself what I would recommend you do first of all is decide which is your favorite fabric so mine is the floral fabric so that's the fabric that I'm going to team up with the batting and what we want to do is pop these on the table so you've got the wrong side of the fabric that's pattern face it that's wrong side facing you and then we're popping the batting on top. Because you've got that half an inch difference, just as you're sitting this centrally on that piece of fabric, you'll notice you've got a quarter inch all the way around there, and that's really important. So once you've done that stage, no need to worry about pinning this just now. We're going to flip this over, so this time we can see the pretty fabric facing you, and that's really important at this stage. Using a ruler and a heat erasable pen, what we're then doing is drawing, and we're drawing from the top left corner to the bottom right corner. So effectively, what we're going to do is put a cross on here, and we will repeat that in a little while on the other piece of fabric that we've popped to one side. So if I just show you that, that first line that we've drawn there, you should be able to see that line, and it's going across the two points. Popping that back flat on the table, we're going to do it on the other side. So we're making that cross, on the right side of the fabric. So you've got the right side of the fabric pattern facing you at this stage. So now you can see we've got a cross just on this fabric. And for this project, a bit similar to when you're making a bag, you also need to repeat that same step on the fabric that you've got. So that second piece of fabric now that hasn't got any batting on there. So just taking your ruler, popping it on top and drawing a cross along your two points. And really, this is for decorative purposes. So I'm going to use a zigzag stitch here, but if you've got a beautiful all singing, all dancing sewing machine, you've got those beautiful um, stitches on there, then I definitely recommend getting the most from your machine and using those lovely stitches. I think this would look lovely um, for a summer party, perhaps with some little flowers on there. So just to remind you now, we've got the batting on the wrong side of the outer fabric, and we've drawn the cross. And then we've got just the single piece of fabric. And again, we've drawn that cross just here. And what we're going to do, so I'm using a contrasting thread on here, really so you can see this, but you could use a color thread that coordinates with the fabric that you're using. And I'm simply going to set this up on a zigzag stitch now. And I'm using a zigzag stitch really because most machines now have zigzag stitches on there. And what we're doing when we're lining this up is it's really important that if I just find a little pair of scissors, that the center of your machine foot is sitting in line with that pen line. So once you've got that set up, we're just simply going to sew a zigzag stitch along the top of that pen line. And we're going to repeat that on all four pen lines that we've popped on there. The great thing about using a zigzag stitch is it doesn't matter if it's absolutely perfect. You could put pins in here to secure this, but I tend to find when placing fabric on top of batting, it doesn't really move much anyway. So we've got that beautiful zigzag stitch there that's running from point to point. And just take it off the edge of your machine when you've finished and repeat that on the other side as well. So just to remind you, you'll have one piece that's got your batting and one piece that is without your batting. And if you can see closely, you'll be able to see that I'm just following that pen line, making sure it's sitting just in between my sewing foot line there. But again, don't worry if this is not absolutely perfect. When we put the bowl together, you're not actually going to see whether it's perfect or not. So a nice creative line that we're getting there. 
just stop when we get to the other side. So if you see here now, you perhaps might be able to see this better from the batten side. We've just got that nice zigzag stitch running across those lines that we've drawn on. So then I want you to repeat this on your lining fabric. So this is the fabric now without the batting that we're going to see on the inside of the bowl. I find this part watching the zigzag stitch very therapeutic and I tend to zone out at this point. So because you're doing a zigzag stitch, when you come into the edge of your fabric, just slow down a little because we don't want the fabric to get caught in your machine. Just trim away your excess cotton. You can do this as you go or all together, it's entirely up to yourself. You, I'm no doubt will have your preferred way. And we're just repeating that now on that fourth drawn line. Now the great thing about using a heat erasable pen, and I'll show you that in a moment, is once we apply the heat from the iron, that will just remove that line. And I find by just having those lines, you could absolutely do this without the lines. But I do feel for me, it's a bit like having the comfort of my sat nav. If the line's there, then I feel like I've got a guide to follow. So, just taking all the excess bits of cotton off now. We can just move those out the way for a moment. And then what we're going to do is just press over the top of those fabrics with the iron to remove those pen lines that we've drawn on there. And now the great thing is we've got that lovely line, we've got that lovely guided line and nobody knows that we've drawn on there, which is why I love the heat erasable pens, I have to say. They're one of my favourite sewing room accessories. Okay, so nice and simply now what we're going to do, again, just pop that lining fabric out of the way for now. And this time we're folding our fabric in half and we're folding in half so the two right sides of the fabric are touching and when we fold this in half we've got the batting exposed and that's what we can see when we're looking at it. Now taking a little ruler, I find it's easier to work with a little ruler, what we're doing is aligning the ruler with the top raw edge of the fabric and just making a little pen mark two inches down from the top raw edge. Now it's the raw edge of the fabric that I'm referring to, not the batting, remember you've got that little quarter inch difference there. And then the next thing we're going to do, pop the ruler just at the side, and again, we're going to draw a line. But this time, from the folded edge, we're going to mark that up one inch. So we've got one inch along the top raw edge um, where we folded it, and we've got two inches down from the top raw edge. And then nice and easy, what we're going to do is align the ruler with those two marks and just draw in the cross them. So we've got a diagonal line, which is what's going to create the bowl. So this is going to put the angle on there and this is going to make sure our bowl sits nice and snug inside. So turning your fabric, we're going to repeat that now on each side. Just get rid of that little bit of cotton. So one inch in from the top. So just to remind you from the folded edge, we're coming one inch in and making a little line. And then this time we're lining the ruler up with the top raw edge of the fabric and marking down two inches sitting our ruler on top and just joining those two points up. And that's going to create our stitch line in a moment. But we're going to do this as a bit of a production line to speed things up. So folding your fabric in half again. So this time we've opened it up and we've folded it in half again. So we've got the batting exposed. And then we want to draw an inch in and two inches down. And we'll do the bottom as well. So the great thing about this project and what makes this project so fast is you're just simply repeating each stage, one with your batting and one without. And again, we're just drawing those lines across there. Now, just slide a little pin in to stop any movement of your fabric. And whenever I use my pins, I always imagine the pins are arrows and I always point the pins to the section that I'm sewing. Now, if you sat down like I am today, it really doesn't matter. But of course, if you've got a separate workstation to where your machine is, it's just a reminder when you return to your sewing machine where you're sewing. And where we're actually sewing now, so we've drawn this line and what we want to do is sew across this line. And it is absolutely crucial that we reverse stitch at our start and stop points. If you don't like using the reverse stitch on your sewing machine, which I know some people don't, you can just leave an extra tail of cotton about three inches long and you can hand tie those if you prefer. 
So sliding this under our machine now, we're going to start and we're sewing, so exactly the same as I did when we sewed across the pen marks on the outer fabric, we're using the guide of the foot to follow that pen line. And we're going to reverse stitch to start with. So let's just return this back to a straight stitch. And then we're going to reverse stitch to start with. And then we'll sew along to the edge and we'll reverse stitch again. And then we can take that off the machine. Take your cottons away as you go. So pivot your fabric now and we're sewing the next line. So we're simply going to repeat that now on this panel. So start by reverse stitching and finish by reverse stitching as well. And take your threads off as you go at this stage. So now we've done those both sides, what we're going to do is remove the pins open up the project and you can see already this is starting to form what is beginning to look like a ball with these beautiful fabrics. So we're folding this in half now and making sure that all our seams or all our raw edges are lining up. Slide a pin back through and this will just prevent movement when you're sewing along here in a moment. So slide a pin on each side, don't let it come into contact with that pen line. And again, we're returning that to the sewing machine, reverse stitching to start. And reverse stitching to finish. And remove the cotton at each stage as you go. And now as we've done that here on um, the side with the batting, what we want to do is we want to do it on the other side as well. each time removing the thread as you go. You could trim this all at once if you wanted to. But let's just take the pins out now and let's have a little look at what very fast is starting to form our little bowl cosy. I'm sure you'll agree that's beautiful and actually it needs to be filled with uh, a little bowl and some strawberries perhaps in there. So let's just very quickly, we'll pop this out of the way for now and let's just repeat that on our other piece of fabric that this time doesn't have the batting on there. I've managed to lose the power. Oh, there it is. There we go. So we're lining this up onto our fabric. Folded edge, we're coming one inch in, just to remind you. And the opposite side, by just bringing the rule around, you can speed through this now, because you've done it a few times. And we're drawing that angle on there. So it is absolutely important that you follow the same steps on each project, on each side. And folding that, so we've got our first two sides, we're just opening this up. Fold it in in half again. Let's get rid of that little bit of cotton. And again, from the folded edge, we're measuring one inch in. And along the folded edge, we're measuring two inches down. And repeating that the same top and bottom. And drawing those two lines to match up. And we want to repeat the same step now by sliding your pins through very quickly and sewing along, remembering to reverse stitch at the start point and at the finish point. This time we'll trim all the cottons at the end just to speed this little process up. And removing those pins now and opening the second side. So again, you can see just how fast this is coming together. Make sure when you're popping your pins through that you're doing it on the side that's got the pen mark because you always want to be able to see your pen, um, always want to be able to see your pins and your pen mark, of course, so you know that, where that guideline's going. And the more of these you make, the faster you'll get with making it, like any project, and you'll play with the angles. And just to finish that last one there. Okay, so we're going to just finish this little part here by removing the pins and just trimming away all that excess cotton. That's it. So we've now got two bowls, if you like. So we've got your lining 
and then we've got your outer fabric as well. And what we want to do to remove the bulk so it's not too thick to sew through is working from, so we can see this blue pen line here, we're going to leave a quarter inch and just trim away that excess and do that on all eight sides, so on both parts of your project. I seem to be collecting cotton as I go. Let's move these right out of the way. Okay, and then we're going to trim the excess as well on your lining fabric. I've got a piece of cotton here that just doesn't want to be snipped away. It's doing its best to stay on there. Okay, so now we've got your little bowl cosy. And what we want to do is we've got the right side of the fabric pattern facing you. And we want to turn this inside out. So the wrong side this time of the lining fabric is wrong side facing you. And as we drop that inside, you'll notice that these line up. Now what's really important to do here, and you could absolutely use quilting clips, which sometimes I often do, but what will really helpful to get you that nice finish on there is if when we look closely at these seams, we'll press one seam as if you were making a quilt. So um, you'll push one seam to the left and one seam to the right. Now whenever I've got seams that are nesting together, I always push two pins through either side. So we've got a bit that's it and then we'll pop another one through just here. So if I just show you that very carefully, we've got two pins that are quite close to that seam line and that really just means that there's going to be very little movement when you're sewing that around in a little while. So if you've got projects with seams, I always pin the seams first. And that just means when we reverse this, you get a nice, you get a nice professional finish on there, which is what we want. And it's a nice easy project as well. So again, just talking you through that step, we press one seam to the left, one seam to the right, and you'll feel, even through the, even through the bulk of your batting, you'll feel those nest together. So again, we're just pushing your pins through, and we're getting those as close as we can to that um, sew line there. And we're doing that on all four sides. And then the next stage, what we want to do at the next stage is work on your corners. So we've got all of those seams sitting nice and snug together. And what we want to do now is bring those together. So just take that extra off, extra bit of cotton off. Because we've got these beautiful stitch lines here, what we want to do is to get them, when we turn this inside out, we want these to look as if they're just rolling around the bowl. So they're finishing on the outside and continuing on the inside. So to do that, what we want to do is to just sit those zigzags on top of each other and just roll it out, making sure those zigzags come as close together as we can. And then we're sliding a pin. Again, like I said a little earlier, using your pins as arrows, we want to slide those out to the sides that we're sewing. And we're going to repeat that on all four sides, remembering to roll out those seams or roll out those um, corners so your zigzag stitch are lining up as best we can when we reverse these. So rolling them out. If you've got any cotton, just make sure you trim that off at this point. Just take that off. Okay, so rolling those zigzag stitches out and then pinning each corner. And the last thing to do really now before we return this back to the sewing machine and continue to stitch is to leave our turning gap. So this is really important and sometimes we get so excited, we're almost finished our project and we forget that we've got to leave a gap. Of course, we can always go back and use our unstitcher, but to prevent that happening, what we want to do, avoid, I always avoid starting sewing in the corner because I find it incredibly difficult to just get a nice um, close finish on there. And I always try and avoid leaving a turning gap where I've got a seam. So we're not putting too much pressure on that seam. So what we want to do in the middle of any one of these sides, it really doesn't matter, is pop it flat on the table and we're going to mark up a two inch turning gap here. So just avoiding your corner, and it's quite tight, just avoiding your corner and just avoiding your seam. And we'll start sewing here at this first um, pen line, 
by reverse stitching and then we're sewing all the way around the bowl cosy coming back into the second pen line and remembering to reverse stitch as well. Now at this point because we don't want to sew over our pins um, and we you know we want to make sure they're well out of the way you'll notice that I always leave mine a quarter inch back but what we want to do is just reverse this so when we're sewing we can actually physically see those pins on top of the sewing machine. So we're starting just here, dropping your needle to begin with, and then we're going to start by reverse stitching. When you come in close to your pins, just remove your pins. You'll find that there isn't much movement when you've got your batting, and then we're sewing to that first corner. When we get to that first corner, just stop, manually drop your pin or your needle into the fabric, lift your foot and pivot. Now because I've been sewing for quite some time I'm very good at guessing where the quarter inch is but if for any reason yours isn't it's nice and simple you can just release that pin and line it back up and what we want to do is line it up use your guide we're working with a quarter inch seam allowance or the side of your sewing foot whichever you find easy just so you've got a nice easy guideline on there so again we're sewing down move your pins as you go you can still feel that nesting together when you get to that stitch line which is that seam drop your pin drop your needle and pivot your fabric and it's only a slight pivot but we want to pivot that fabric and that will give us those nice corners on the bowl when we turn so again coming in drop the needle pivot your fabric when you get to your next sewn line just stop drop your needle and pivot slightly and it really only is slightly in that center there so we're going to sew all the way around until we get to that pen mark. Now if you were sewing on a darker fabric and you couldn't see the pen mark because you're using a darker fabric, what I tend to do is just put two pins in there. So every time I see two pins together I know that that's my reverse stitch point. And we're just coming now to that second pen mark and reverse stitching. And we're taking this from your machine. If you've got any pins left in, which I normally do, I'm a bit naughty and don't always move them as we go, just take any of those excess pins out. Now what we want to do to get a nice finish on the corners or on the points of your bowl cosy as we have done here, just using a nice sharp pair of scissors, we're going to trim in quite close. So we're just taking on the corner, just taking that off nice and close. And what that'll do is reduce some of the bulk in the corner. So when you turn this inside out, you get a nice finish on your bag too, on your bowl too. So do that on all four corners. And you're really only trimming for about half an inch or an inch most at each corner there. Now what we're going to do next is reverse our bag. So to reverse your project, what I always do, and it is a very small gap at this point, is poke your fingers through that hole to the furthest point of your project, whatever project it is that you're making, pinch your fabric together and reverse. So now you've got the furthest corner poking out there and you'll find that this actually pulls out and teases out quite nice. Take your time because you really don't want to tear those seams. So now we're just following around and pushing each of those corners out. First of all, I tend to do this just pushing those out with my finger and I'll follow this around either you might have little pokey tools, but you can just use the tip of some small scissors. Just be careful not to poke this through. So I've just pushed those back through that little hole and we're just poking into each corner now. So just slowly wiggle onto those corners just popped out there so we might need to just hand stitch that one together so bring that in okay so now we've turned this inside out we've got our nice corner so just poking the tip of the scissors in the corner there by using the small scissors we'll get that nice finish on the edge and you can see now that we've got this beautiful double-sided bowl cosy so just to finish what we want to do now is follow this around so where you've got your raw edges just push those raw edges inside because of your seam allowance it will naturally sit into position and just to give this a nice finish I know a lot of people will try and avoid pressing at each stage but it really does give you a better finish on each project so what we're doing now is just pressing along those now sewn edges just to get that final finish point before we sew this to complete our project 
By using a little iron as well, it just means we can get right into those tricky corners. Okay. So the next stage is just to follow this around now and slide some pins out there. Again, you could use your quilting clips if you wanted to. And I find that this stage is really important. So especially because we've got batting, so just push in your pins through both, well, all three layers, take away any cotton as we're going. And this just stops the movement when we're going to finish the project by top stitching. If like me, your little scissors popped out the corner with the greatest will in the world, sometimes that happens, then just follow that around when you finish the whole project and just give that a little hand sew it to finish. If you ever stumble across pins that are a little bit blunt and you've, then you're fighting to get those through your fabric, just get rid of them. Um, it really isn't worth the damage that it does onto your fabric. What you'll see here, where I've got that little gap, is that I'm just putting an extra few pins in there. Just really to remind myself to go a little bit slower on that section where we've got that turning gap. So again, using those pins as our arrows, pointing towards the side that we're going to sew. Then when you return back to your sewing machine, you know exactly where you're sewing. If you like me, I like finding little projects like this that are really fast and easy and then I want to make a few at a time. So just having these little tips, these little tips of where to push in pins really do help you speed up your process. So we've all the way around on the outer bag now. I keep calling it a bag, but it's a bowl cosy. We've been making lots of bags recently. So all the way around now, we've just popped the pins. So the same as we did when we sewed it the other way, we're going to make sure the pins are sitting facing up on the machine so we can remove them as we sew. And we're not going to start in a corner or on one of our seams. We're going to start again on any one. It doesn't matter whether you're starting where your turning gap is. And we're just lining this up now on the sewing machine, ensuring that the side of the foot is running along the top of the bowl cosy. And we're going to return this back to the zigzag stitch. By using the zigzag stitch at this stage as well, it also means that when it's sewing across that open um, gap, your turning gap, you haven't got to worry too much about hand stitching if you don't want to. So again, you'll be able to see this on your machine, just stop and pivot each time you either come to a point or a seam, all the way to the end, drop your needle in and pivot. So now I've got those extra pins here because I've got my turning gap. So just making sure, and this part really more so than any other side, it's crucial that we're right on the edge of the fabric. And by having that zigzag stitch, we really haven't got to worry about hand stitching. if you don't want to, of course. If you want to, then you absolutely can. And we're just following that around on each side now, just to complete this project. If your needle's going to come into contact with your pin, which mine tend not to, because I always leave them at least a quarter inch back, then stop and remove your pin. Keep turning and it's worth stopping to get that nice finish on your bowl. It takes a few extra minutes to do that stage, but it's definitely worth it when you see the finished result. I'm almost back in line with our zigzag stitch. And we can stop just there. Take away all your excess pieces of cotton. If you have got an overlap with your zigzag stitch where your zigzag stitch is finished, you can unstitch those little stitches that don't quite line up, which sometimes happens when you're using a zigzag stitch. But there we have it. We've got a really cute, take away all your extra pins. Again, I've left a few extras, but we've got this really fast, super cute, bowl cozy, 
which is now ready to pop our bowl inside. Mine's full of cotton, of course, but it'll look great with some strawberries in there. I hope you've enjoyed today's tutorial. Please pop by the Ho-Chanda YouTube um, and to see all our tutorials, or you can find me on the Ho-Chanda channel. Thanks ever so much.